I'm Daniel Dacey, I'm a teacher at TASTAFE and in this video I'm going to introduce you to the idea of variables in Python. I want you to think about a computer program that we're writing and what we'd like to do is store three pieces of information about the person using our program in the computer's memory. So let's say for example that we'd like to know a few details like the person's name, what their favorite color is, and also what their hobby is. Now if we took this paint program here in this blank canvas and we said this represented the computer's memory, what we would really want to do is create three boxes that we can use to store the answers to our questions. Now each box looks the same at the moment, so neither us or our computer program knows which box it should use to store, for example, the person's name. Should I use the first box, the second box, or the third? Because they all look the same at the moment. So what we also need to do, conceptually at this point, is label those boxes. Come up with some way that we can recognize what they should contain. So if I go ahead and label each one, I could call the first box name, the second box color and the third box hobby. Now I can put inside of each of those boxes the answers to my questions. So if I was using the program I might decide to answer by saying that my name is Dan, my favorite color is blue and my hobby is tennis. And that'll work fine. The great thing about these boxes, if you want to think of them like that in memory, is that computer memory can change over time. So if someone else uses the program tomorrow, we can change the contents of those boxes, but not necessarily change the actual boxes themselves or the names of the boxes, the labels that we've given them. So if someone comes along tomorrow, perhaps that's Tim, they would put their name in the box here and change that, and then they could change the color and they could change their favorite hobby as well. And that won't worry our program. And the really cool thing about variables, which we're going to introduce now, is that they work exactly like this. We set up spaces in memory, which we call not a box, but a variable, and we give that variable a name that makes sense to us and to the program. So we could call our variable name, another variable color, and our third variable hobby. And then with each one of those, we can store the information about our user. So let's have a look at this concept and actually see what it would look like if we were to make this in a Python program. Now I've installed Python already on this computer. It's a straight install of Python 3x from the python.org site. And when you install Python, you also get a free little editor that works fantastic for what we want to do when we're learning programming. And it's called Idle. So I'll just start that now. When idle starts by default, you get the Python shell. You'll see the details up the top here in the uh, window here, Python 3.35 in my case, and we'll also get a little command prompt appearing here. This allows us to type in commands straight in there and get them responded to. So for example, if I knew that print was going to print something to the screen, which it does, I could do something like this. And as soon as I press enter on the keyboard, it's going to go ahead and run that code. In this case, I've done a print statement and it's returning hello. But in our programs, we actually would like to edit them first and then run them. So I need to do an extra step and go to the file menu and say new file. This brings up a text editor that allows us to actually type in our computer program. And that's where we're going to start to set up our variables. Now remember we had three variables that we were going to do. We had name, color, and hobby. And we're going to put Dan, Blue, and Tennis, for example, in each one of those variables. It's very simple to use a variable inside Python. All I need to do is, first of all, give it a name. So let's call our first one name. That created an empty or blank box, if you want to think of it that way, with no contents in it. Of course, I do want it to have my name in it, so to do that, I need to assign it by using the equal sign. Then I can say what I want to put inside the variable, 
in this case, Dan. There is an important step I've done here as well. You've noticed I've used these quotes. That's because Dan is what's called a string. There's various types of content you can put in boxes, and by default, Python expects you to store strings in variables. So that could be numbers, characters, or just letters, or any combination of those. When you're working with strings in Python, you need to put the quotes around the content. So in this case, I've put quotes around Dan. That tells the computer program that that is a string. And that's exactly what our variable called name is expecting, a string value. Let's go ahead and do our second one. So this one's going to be called hobby. And we're also going to say it's equal to a content. Um, and we'll call this uh, tennis. And let's do our third one, which you can probably guess by now. That's going to be color. And we're going to equal that to blue. Now one interesting thing you'll notice when I did this demonstration of actually creating our variables is I did them in a different order to what I had them in my paint program here. I had them in the order of name, color, and hobby, and yet when I created them in my editor here, I did them in the order of name, hobby, and color. It really doesn't matter what order you do them in. As long as you've got all the variables you need, everything's fine. Now, believe it or not, we have actually created a working Python application just with what we've put in now. Let's run it and see what comes out the other end. Now, I'm going to click on Run and Run Module. It's going to ask me to save the work that I've been, work I've been doing in the editor, so I better go ahead and do that now. So let's call this Variable Exercise. And then it takes me to the shell. And you'll notice, if you looked very carefully on this video, that in fact there was a subtle difference. We saw an extra row appear and the command prompt, but nothing was shown. We don't know who's, um, what the favourite colour was or who the person was or anything like that. And yet I'm pretty confident that this program actually did work. The problem with the program at the moment is that we've got no way of telling because it's not actually putting anything back out on the screen for us to see what's inside those variables. So that's not a problem, it just means we've got a little bit more work to do before we can have some success and know for sure that our program's working. Let's go back to the editor for a moment. So now I've created the three variables, name, hobby and colour, and I've given a value of Dan, Tennis and Blue for each one of those respective variables. What I want to do next is actually see the contents of those variables, that's Dan, Tennis and Blue, print it out onto the screen so I can be sure that they're actually in there. Fortunately for us, Python has a very simple way of doing that and that's using the print command. So I type print, then a bracket, and inside the bracket I put what it is that I'd actually like to print. Now I've got to be a little bit careful here. There is a difference between, for example, doing this and doing this. If you've been following along, you might already have an idea of what's going to happen here. But in the first example, I'm printing a string because I've got those quotes. And you can see it's in green on my editor here. That means it's not trying to print the variable called name. It's trying to just print the string called name. It'll work, but it'll just print name. If I actually want to print Dan on the screen, then I need to reference the actual variable name. And that's what I've done in the second example. I've just put name. Notice I didn't put any quotes around it. Let's run the program like it looks now and we can see the difference. There we go. So the first print statement, which you recall had the, the uh, quotes around it, prints what's inside the quotes. The second example that didn't have any quotes around it recognized that must be a variable name. So it found the variable found the contents of the variable, which was Dan, and printed that to the screen, which is really what we're after. Let's go back and print out what's inside the hobby variable and the color variable as well. So I'm going to do print. Hobby. And print. 
color. Do you think that'll work? Well, the truth is, no it's not, because remember, I've put them inside quotes. That means they're going to be strings. Just to be sure, let's run it and see what happens. Yep, just prints out name, hobby and color. Remember when I want to print the variable name, or the variable content, sorry, I need to just use the variable name without the quotes. So let's change that and see what we get. Dan, Tennis and Blue. Excellent. Now of course you may not understand what Blue's all about. I mean I've just printed it on the screen. What's Blue? Is it my... I like the colour blue or do you know I feel a bit depressed today? Well if I've be honest, I probably have been a bit depressed because I'm recording videos all day, but that's not what that's supposed to mean. So what we really want to do is actually put a description around the contents of those variables so it makes a little bit more sense to us. So what I'm going to do with these three lines that I've already got is I'm going to comment the lines. Now commenting is something you can do in your code because it allows you to leave a note if you like to yourself and to anyone else looking at your code about what you were doing. Another cool thing about comments is also get ignored by the program. But when you run the program, your computer program doesn't try and actually run any structure that are inside a comment. It assumes they're there for your benefit to read, not for its benefit to run. Let me show you what I mean. If I put a hash symbol in front of that first example here, which is printing the variable name, and then run the program, what you're going to see is it skips the first one and only prints the contents of our hobby and our favourite colour. So comments can be handy at times to actually comment out temporarily bits of code that you've written when you're trying to sort out perhaps a problem with your program or you're just trying things out and you don't want to delete things because they're handy for reference but you don't want the program to run them every time that you press F5. Okay. Now remember what we want to do now is print out contents of for example our name but we also want to put some description around it then the contents of hobby and contents of colour. So let's start with the name, which is an easy one. I'm going to go print bracket. And then I print a string. And that string I'm going to print is hello. But of course I don't just want to print hello, I'd like to print out hello Dan. So I need to add Dan onto the end of that message. Let's try using a plus key and then the name of the variable that contained Dan. So now I've got print string hello plus the contents of the variable name. Let's see what that looks like. Press F5, save the changes. And I'm nearly there. I get hello Dan. But I haven't got a space in the middle now, which is not very easy to read. So I quickly make a change to fix that. There's a couple of things I can do. I'll show you a shortcut. The easy way to do it is simply to put a space after the O hello and before you close the quote. Let's try it again. F5, run. And now we get hello Dan. Well, let's fix that one. Let's try doing hobby. Again, print statement. Your hobby is space, close quotes, plus hobby. Remember, hobby is the name of the variable. All right, let's try that one. F5, save my changes. Hello Dan, your hobby is tennis. Looks pretty good. And let's do the third. Remember put the space in before we close the quote. Plus the variable name, in this case colour. F5, save the changes. I mean, hello Dan, your hobby is tennis and your favourite colour is blue. Now it's starting to look a lot more like what we want. Let's go back to our code for a moment and have a look at what we've done. So we created three variables which we labelled name, hobby and colour and we assigned those variables some default values. In other words, we put them in the code, Dan, tennis and blue. Then we used three print statements to actually show us the contents of each of those variables but also to put them in context we put some string around them, uh, some strings in front of them, sorry, to actually explain what those variables are talking about. And that's how we ended up with our nice clear text messages here to our user. 
There's only really one big problem with this program I've read so far, and it works, and it's this. It works brilliantly if your name is Dan, and you like tennis, and your favourite colour is blue. If you're not all three of those things, our program is a little bit limiting, because every time you run it, it's always going to have the same answer. So we now come to the very last step in this introductory video to uh, variables. We'd like to change the content of the variables by asking the user what their name is and their hobby and their colour. Let's start by just looking at the name. So again, I'm going to comment these three lines, well these two lines at the bottom here, just to get started. And just leave the name one. Okay. So, remember before, name was set to Dan. But I actually would like to ask the user what their name is and change it. In here, I'm going to use a new command you haven't heard before called input. As you can probably guess, input is something that is input from the keyboard. So, that sounds pretty good. So I want to say input what is your name? Question mark. Notice I left a space after the question mark as well before I close the string because I don't want the answer to be typed right up against the question mark. I want a little bit of white space because it's easier to read. Well that looks pretty good. Let's just try that and see what happens. Scroll down here a little bit so you can see it. Well, it is actually there. It's actually at the bottom of the screen, so we can't see it in the recording. Just let me move it a bit, and then we'll see it. Okay, there we go. What is your name? Well, okay, let's say that I'm Tim. Type Tim. I press Enter, and it says, Hello, Dan. Okay, that wasn't what I was expecting. So obviously there's a little bit more I need to do with my program. Let's go back and have a look and see if we can figure out what's happened. Well, I've got an input there and I asked for the person's name. And it definitely did pause and it did allow me to type it in. But the question is, what did I do with it after I got that person's name from the keyboard? Well, at the moment, the answer is I didn't do anything with it. I just basically threw it away. The reason why? because I didn't put that value into the name variable. So you might be thinking, well, how would I know how to do that? Well, actually, you've already done one like that. If we go up the top there, you can see there's the variable name, and you assigned it Dan by using the equal sign. So let's comment out that example there, and let's try doing it down here. Name equals input what is your name. Let's see what happens when we run that. So I'll put Tim and it comes back with hello Tim. So now we have the pieces of the puzzle that we need to both store things in the computer's memory by creating a variable and we also have a way to change the contents of that variable by asking the user something to type into the keyboard. So they type in their answer and we can store it. So armed with that we should be able to now ask the user what their hobby and their colour is. Or their favourite colour I should say. So let's go ahead and comment out those first ones I did because they were what we call hard coded. So in other words they were fixed or set to a particular value when the program first started. And let's instead, when the program starts, actually ask the user. So I'm going to say hobby equals input what is your hobby question mark and again put a space before the uh, close quotes and one more question to ask which is color equals input our what is your favourite colour? Oops, I've got my question mark. There we go. Okay. So, that looks better. 
I'm asking for their hobby and their colour. Let's see what happens when I run that. And I'm hoping you can see that I've missed a step here, but we'll see if you recognise it. So I type in Tim. Uh, my hobby is fencing. And my favourite colour is yellow. And I type those things in and it comes back with hello Tim. What happened to telling me what my hobby was and my favourite colour was? Well again, let's go back to our code. Ah, there's one more thing I needed to do. I had earlier commented out the print statements for saying what my hobby was and what my favourite colour was. And I hadn't forgotten to take those out. So let's uncomment those now so that the compiler actually sees them and we'll try to run them as part of our program. F5 Okay, Tim Fencing Yellow and we get back, hello Tim your hobby is fencing and your favourite colour is yellow. So that wraps up our introduction to variables. We've seen how we can create variables and assign them values in the code if we wish, like we did here where I created a variable called name and set it to Dan. And we've also seen how we can ask for a question of the user at the keyboard, take what they type in and put that into our variable as well, which can be very handy. Finally, we saw how to print the contents of a variable by using print bracket and then the name of the variable. We could also use the name of a variable inside a more fancy print statement where we want to combine it with a string. So in this case, we're using hello and then adding on the end of hello the contents of the variable name. I hope that was useful for you and in a future video we're going to look at some of the other types of um, variables that you can use other than string type variables. But for now, have a go at creating some of your own variables then set up some values for them, first of all in the code, and then later using an input and test it and see if you can get your own program running. <laughs>